Hello, I'm Colin Daly of Campbell Scientific in Logan, Utah. In this video, we'll show you how to get a CRS-451 up and running using HydroSci software. The CRS is a Campbell recording sensor. This is a water level and temperature sensor with a built-in data recorder, all housed in this compact stainless steel package. If you have an OBS-3A, you'll go through a similar process with HydroSci. The steps you'll go through are install the HydroSci software, it is important to install HydroSci before plugging in the USB cord. By installing the software first, you'll get the Windows device driver set up correctly. Different Windows operating systems do this differently, so follow the installation instructions when you insert the DVD. In HydroSci software, you'll first configure the CRS to take measurements. You'll also set up what data values you need recorded. This is fully customizable. So think about the kind of information that is most helpful for your project. HydroSci also lets you monitor the measurements and collect data, which entails copying data files from the CRS to your computer. Once the data is collected, HydroSci also provides the tools to correct the data for changes in barometric pressure. Let's get started. I've already installed HydroSci and the drivers on my field computer, so we'll connect to the sensor next. Double-click the HydroSci icon to launch the software. We'll be using the CRS-451 in this tutorial. In order to connect to and configure the CRS, you must connect the USB to your computer. If it isn't already connected, do that now by removing the end cap and connecting the mini USB connector. Connect the other end to your computer. Then assign the COM port assigned to your USB serial port. The first time you connect to a sensor, you can either assign a name or use the default one. The default is the sensor's model name, underscore, serial number. You can always change this later. Once connected, you need to configure the CRS for your application. HydroSci will step you through configuring the CRS to take measurements. Is this a groundwater or surface water installation? Do you want to take measurements on a time interval or based on a change in depth? If this is a groundwater installation, will you be monitoring a pump and slug test? Keep in mind that the faster you take measurements, the shorter the CRS battery life will be. The battery will last about five years when taking measurements once an hour. One of the nice things about the CRS is that the battery is user replaceable. We have another video showing you how easy that procedure is. Depending on how you'll be using the CRS, select the appropriate field application. We'll set our site up for long-term, time-based surface water measurements. You can set the starting point for your measurements. The correction will be applied at the start time that we'll set next. The CRS must be in a position at the start time for the level to be adjusted correctly. Enter the observed staff gauge height here. You can modify this later if needed. Again, the CRS must be in position at the start time set here for the level to be adjusted correctly. Generally, this is sometime in the future. Here, you'll enter how often a measurement will be taken. We'll set it to one minute. Next, you'll also set up what data values you need recorded. This is fully customizable. You can have up to four different intervals for data storage. For example, you could store water and temperature values every 15 minutes, every hour, every six hours, and every day. Those values can be the maximum, minimum, averages, and more. So think about the kind of information that is most helpful to your project. This screen is used to select and name the output files. It'll look a little different depending on the selected field application. We'll set up two tables. We'll store data every 15 minutes, so we'll call it that. The second table will contain hourly data. Next, we'll select the measurements to be stored in each table or file. You'll get a chance to set up each table separately. You'll select the measurements first. Here, we pick level, then units. We'll pick feet. And the processing. We'll start with average. Continue to add other measurements to be stored.
When you're done adding measurements, you can move on to the next table. Here, we'll set up the hourly table or file. Do it in the same way as you did for the other table or tables. You can store different data, or the same, in each table. It depends on what information you need for your particular project. When all the tables are set up, click Finish. Next, you're asked if you want to apply the configuration to the CRS itself. Clicking Yes will send the setup you just worked on to the CRS. You also have a chance to set the time. It is usually a good idea to set it now. If your start time is in the past, you'll get a screen asking if you want to continue. Since we set the start time to the current time a few minutes ago, we'll click Yes here. Generally, the start time is sometime in the future when you'll have the sensor in position so the level can be adjusted correctly. You can also collect data at this point. Since this is a new sensor, we do not need to collect data. Saving the configuration file is a good idea. You can use a saved configuration to quickly set up another CRS. Once the configuration is saved, you can modify it at any later date. Remember though, if you make changes in the software here, you'll need to apply those changes to your device by clicking the Apply Configuration button. Now we'll monitor real-time values and collect data. The Monitor tab displays the current sensor measurements. Clicking on a measurement value changes the units displayed. Pressing the View Status button shows important information about your CRS. The next tab is used to collect the data stored on the CRS. Each table will be copied to a different file on your PC. Since we just set up the CRS, no values are collected. Once the CRS has been running for a while, you'll have data to collect. Once the data is collected, HydroSci also provides the tools to correct the data for changes in barometric pressure. Since the CRS pressure transducer is unvented, it is monitoring sealed gauge pressure, which is affected not only by water level, but also barometric pressure. Data from a CRS can be merged with data from a barometric pressure sensor. I have a couple of data files already on my computer for us to take a look at. Browse to your data file collected from the CRS. Browse to the file containing the barometric pressure. Use the drop-down list to select the barometric pressure reference column in the data file. HydroSci will convert the units, so don't worry if your barometric pressure is in different units than your water level. Next, browse to where the corrected data file will be stored. Give the file a name and build the corrected data file. It'll take several seconds. Now you can view the corrected data file. Select columns to view the data as a line graph. This is the line graph button. It is hard to see subtle changes because the barometric pressure is at a different scale than the water level readings. To assign the barometric pressure to the right axis, right-click on the pressure label. Scroll through the data. HydroSci has online help built into every step of the way. You can also press F1 to get help. When you're done, go back to the Connect tab to disconnect. That's all there is to it. Remember, install the HydroSci software and drivers before connecting your CRS to the computer. Please contact a Campbell Scientific Applications Engineer in the Water Resources Group to discuss your application and for answers about your Campbell recording sensor.